Friday. Woohoo! <laughs> Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Marta Nielsen with Utah State University Extension, and I'm so excited to introduce Mike Karen to you. Mike, tell us what you do with Extension and a little bit about where we are and what's going on here. So we're at Thanksgiving Point. We're actually around the show barn at Thanksgiving Point where we have about a half acre of grapes. Uh, we have about, uh, well, as of this spring, we'll be adding some varieties, about 20 varieties of grapes here. And we're trialing different varieties to s for their suitability in Utah. Okay, so when you say trialing, tell me about that process and what you're so doing. So what we're doing is we've, we've planted um, a few plants of, of several different varieties, like I mentioned, in different corners around the show barn. And uh, we're basically evaluating them to see if, if they're vigorous, if they handle the winters, if the, if the fruit is tasty, we evaluate the sugar content of the fruit, and then we'll make recommendations based on you know, what ones do what well and what ones do poorly. So that's so. really perfect. It's exactly Extension's mission of bringing research-based information to you so you can have a better garden and better success in your garden. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, so if you're joining us live today, we would love to hear from you. Give us a like, wave hello, and, and let us know where you are tuning in from. Um, I'm going to be moderating comments, so if you have a question, if you're a grape grower, you aspire to grow grapes, um, we'd love to hear your questions and, and try and answer some of those today. So so primarily in, in northern Utah at least, um, where the climate's colder, uh, we grow hybrid grapes, which are hybrids between um, the European grapes, which is what the typical wine grapes are, okay. uh, which is Vitus vinifera and um, uh, uh, plants that are crossed with that as a parent and then usually some sort of um, American grape species uh, like Vitus labrusca and what are those? Muscadines. What are those better for, the American grapes? So the American grapes are really winter hardy. So Which would be important exactly. in Utah. And they tend to have a strong flavor and they're very winter hardy. And so where the European grapes tend to be a lot less hardy, uh, but they have those nice flavors. That's where the hybridization is coming in and, and trying to bring genetics from the Europeans, uh, European grapes to the, and bring hardiness to them through the American grapes. Okay. Okay. So what are some common American grape varieties that people will be familiar with? So a real common one is Concord. Okay. So yeah. that's our grape jelly, grape juice. Yeah, that's kind juice. of our standard. Yeah, it's very hardy. Lots of seeds, um, but good for juice, jam, jelly. Uh, and a really popular um, Amer uh, European grape would be uh, like Thompson Seedless, which a lot of people like to buy at the supermarket. It's the green, okay. the grape, the green grape. That green grapes. Yeah. And it, it it does okay in some parts of Utah, but it's real iffy because it's not as cold hardy okay. as uh, a lot of the other ones that we're growing. Okay, so what have you found from from this garden? This do you call it a vineyard? Yeah, vineyard. From this vineyard, what have you found to be some of the more successful varieties so that you'd recommend? We've had two really so far that have been real standouts. And uh, one of those is Jupiter, it's called Jupiter. And um, the other one is called Valiant. Okay. Both of those have been real standouts. So are they red grapes or green grapes? Uh, so uh, Jupiter is, uh, you know, I forget on Valiant as I don't really like it that much. Okay. Um, it's hardy, but maybe not yeah, the best Yeah, hardy, for but eating. maybe not. And, and it's all personal preference, right? Right. So when people say, what's your favorite grape? It's like, oh, what, you know, sometimes it's just whatever's ripe on the bush. Right. But um, Jupiter is um, actually more like a, like a pear-shaped grape, okay. kind of elongated. Um, and it's purple. It's dark, but it doesn't, it doesn't have a flavor that's as strong as Concord, but it makes these really fantastic large raisins and oh. is very, very, very good eating fresh off the plant. So seedless. Uh, so the qualities that people look for a lot of times in grapes are like, are like what they're after at the store. Like So um, grapes are sometimes categorized as to whether or not they have a slip skin or a non-slip skin. And what Concords you, have slip skin, right? Yeah, yeah. Which, and that's typical of the Americans. If you've tried to eat a Concord yeah. grape, you know exactly what that is. Yeah, so it's like, have you ever talked about peeling a grape? Right. There's a slimy underneath to that. You can um, kind of pop the grape right yeah, out of its skin. Yeah, it squeezes skin. out, yeah. Um, but um, uh, Jupiter is a non-slip skin, which is what most people prefer in a fresh fresh eating. And the table grapes that you buy at the store are non-slip skin. Right. It's all one, the, the, the skin and, and the, the flesh are kind of 
fuse together. Right. So it doesn't taste pulpy. Right. You get this chewy separation. Yeah, so, it's yeah. much more palatable. Yeah, I it's think. more palatable. Exactly. But, you know, having said that, there's plenty of people that's, that like, even don't mind seeds in their grapes and things like that. And that's... Just total preference. Total preference. So I know that at our, you know, we have several demonstration gardens around the state. I know at the one in, in Caseville, they do grape tastings. Do you any, do anything like we that? We haven't done anything like that here. We're actually hoping to start that. Uh, last year was actually the first year that we actually had a harvest because these grapes were just starting to come into production. Okay, so for someone... We're getting some airplane noise overhead. That's if busy. someone is planning to plant grapes, to start growing grapes, how long before they'll see a yield in their garden? So typically it's three years, um, at least three years, and then you can get a partial yield. Okay. So it's a little bit of a and time And then you're five to six before you're up to what they would consider full production. Okay. Okay, so as we were getting ready for this, we were talking about some things that affect your yield and how many grapes you'll get on your vines. Will you kind of talk us through some of those things? One, one was pruning. Yeah, I can see you've pruning. already done here. Yeah, we did. Our, we finished pruning um, earlier this week because uh, that was getting pretty essential with how much things are budding out. So one of the things that um, determines how well your grapes yield is um, the, the pruning and training styles. So, and I don't know if you can see. Um, here, but we're training uh, all of our grapes here to what's called a spur method of, of pruning. And you can see there's not much left. Do you um, want to come in close here and kind yeah. of close in on so these grapes? There's not much left um, when we prune them as far as wood. I mean, almost all the wood is removed. But what we're really trying to do is just focus on um, where the plant is going to be producing its grapes, and it's going to be producing grapes from the first, uh, near the first few leaves for every one of these little buds is coming out. And so what we're basically trying to do is is tell the plant that's that's the only growth we're interested in really is where the where the fruit is going to be born and then we remove all the the rest of the wood okay so so basically the plant then focuses all of its growth into a more manageable number of buds so it can actually grow good grapes on those instead of being spread out with buds all over the place so it's focusing more on the fruit and not the foliage exactly yep and that and that's that's typical so I think a lot of people like to grow their grapes on a fence and things like that and what we find that it, it, if and they're scared to prune them but what happens over time is the grapes end up going the vines get up going into the neighbor's yard and then that's where all the fruit is oh. you know, move, it moves on down because because grapes um, actually form um, on wood from last year so if, if on older wood they don't bear fruit anymore and so the newer wood grows out and out and out and then pretty soon there's no fruit nearby does that okay. make sense yeah so yeah so pruning can be really critical pruning is a is a big factor in grape production so a lot of people wonder when can i prune is it too late to prune when should when's the cutoff so it's probably not too late to prune although it's pretty close um we've had the weather warm up here and so now it's things are budding out right um and so uh, we like to prune ours in, uh, we do we do our pruning actually in two segments. We do a rough pruning, and that's just clean up all the vines off of the wires and stuff to make it so we can see. And I'm just the right height. Right. I can fit, fit right under underneath the there. <laughs> the we and have a we, question. Okay. It takes three to six years until good production, but how many years of production do you get? Well, some, you could have decades of production. Yeah, and, and there's, there's vineyards that have been in cultivation for centuries. Same plants. So they could be in production the rest of your life. That's amazing. Yeah. Mallory says, love these live videos that teach us new things. Thank you. Oh, Mallory, we're so glad that you're here. Thanks for joining us. Um, if you're enjoying this video, please share it with your friends. Hit like. We would love to have more people join the conversation. And again, if you have any questions, type them in the comments. We would love to. We've got an expert here, Mike Karen. So if you have questions, now is a great time to ask them. So we talked about pruning. What about training? I see you've, we've got this set so, up. Yeah. Uh, pruning liars. and training actually kind of go together and pruning is one of the methods by which we train the plants to be the way they want so uh, like I mentioned earlier this is actually uh, the style that we're training here is actually to what's called a spur training method and that is so that these arms that are out here on the wires and the trunk are all going to be permanent wood which means they'll they'll live year after year and we're always just going to be cultivating these short spurs or these short growths that come off of those arms um, because on, on the varieties, most of the varieties that we're growing, that's where they bear the best fruit, is off of those buds. Okay. 
So there are other. There is another major style, and it's called the cane pruning s system. Um, and and uh, the so Concord is that actually responds fine to that one. Uh, and another one, for example, called Vanessa, which is a really nice uh, kind of a pink table tray. Okay, so different varieties you might want to use exactly. a different method of, and, of pruning exactly. And, and so wine growers, for example, grape growers that are growing for wine, uh, they, they might get very very specific about exactly how they're gonna train their vines because they're looking, they're, they're counting every pound of production. Right. But for most of us, our, our home gardens and small commercial operations, um, grapes will do just fine with kind of an average system. And that's really kind of what we're trying to approximate here is something that's reasonable and manageable, but isn't so nitpicky that it just kind of pushes people out of wanting to do it at all. Right, so is this an acceptable way to prune and train most varieties? Yeah. Yeah, you'll get good production. Overall, you'll, it won't, may not be maximum production if you could push them a little bit farther, but most people would never know if right. there's one way or another right. way. But there's lots of great websites too where you can look up information about those great varieties and it will tell you what methods like cane, spur, or even details on that as to how to get the best production. Okay, okay, so Brett has a question. He says, what varieties do well in Cache Valley? So uh, almost all of the hybrids will do well in Cache Valley. They're plenty hardy. Yeah, a lot of the hybrids, a lot of the hybrid grapes that we're growing here that you see in the market, um, they actually have come out of breeding trials either from Minnesota, Michigan, or New York. And so they're all, they're, they're all programs that are done by universities there um, in those areas specifically to target cold regions. Right. So they're hardier varieties. They're very hardy varieties. And so with the new wine varieties that they're developing in these areas too, that, that's changing the face of uh, wine production as well because now we have a lot more options in colder climates. Okay. So. Okay, so training, is this a pretty common setup for for training grape? I mean, I know people sometimes put them over like pergolas or archways. What are some so, other options? So yeah, you can grow them over pergolas and archways, um, but that's more for show than production. It's probably harder to prune It's them. really hard to prune them. It's really hard to um, take care of any disease or uh, pest problems. And um, it, they, the fruit can also get really messy because it's gonna fall where you're walking or right. where you're sitting. And so I talk to a lot of people that wanna have um, grapes growing over their trellis their, or their pergola, like, they, mm -hmm. like on their patio. And while that's very romantic, um, it's really hard to prune those because they might be 10 feet off the ground and then the grapes will hang through a lot of times. Um, but then when the wasps come and the birds I come, say birds. Yeah, then, it, then it's gonna make a huge mess on the patio and the wasps will come in um, to feed on the grapes after the birds have damaged them. And so then you're gonna have all that nuisance there. So you're not gonna wanna have your picnics out there. Right. So, so those are important things, kind of landscape so design. I would look for other types of vines to put on pergolas, um, and there are even some seedless grapes out there that you can find from specialty growers. Okay. So that's an option still. You must have the grapes, but you won't have the fruit, but that's the whole point, because I don't think you really want the fruit on those kind of structures. So you mean grape vines that don't produce any grapes? Right. Yeah, so mm -hmm. like flowers would be sterile, so they just never develop fruit. But the vines are really beautiful. Right, so you're just growing it for the foliage, exactly. Hmm. Yep. I've never heard of that, that's really interesting. Um, okay, we have a couple questions. Carrie says, what is the best variety for grape juice? So there's no best variety. That just, that just depends on personal taste. Right. There's so many different kinds of grape juices out there already. Um, personally, um, what I've found is Blending uh, more than one variety tends to actually provide most people the most rounded taste. Huh. Um, Interesting. And so that's mixing uh, some of the lighter colored, sweeter grapes, like some of the reds and pinks, with some of the darker, usually stronger flavored types, um, like the, the purples and, like and the Concord. blacks, like a Concord or okay. Jupiter. Yeah. And Carrie, we were just on the other side. The, this vineyard is surrounding the entire barn. Right. Remind me the name of this barn. This is called the Show Barn the show at barn. Thanksgiving Point. Yeah. And there, are, there's signage that tells you all the varieties. Yeah, we have here. all the varieties signed uh, that, are, that are currently yeah. here. Yeah, uh, and I actually took a picture of that and I posted it to our Instagram story. So if you want to see that sign, it lists the varieties and what they're good for. So some are better for yeah, juice, juice, jam, 
And that, why? that's always a hard thing to put on there because it's, it's maybe like traditional uses, but really just because um, you, you, you use a grape for um, jelly doesn't mean it also won't make good juice. Does right. that make sense? Totally. If it's a flavor that you like. So that's kind of tongue in cheek a little bit. You can really, if you, if you find one that you like, you can use it for about anything you want. Right, so. right. But say it's a slip skin grape. It's going to be better as juice. Better for juice or yeah, jelly. Better for juice or jelly. So check out our Instagram stories. You can see the picture of that um, varieties list. Um, and we also have a little diagram on trellising. I took a picture of that yep. too, I think. Is it it's on the top? part of the signage. Yeah. yeah. So Do we have a fact sheet on it? Do we have a fact sheet on it? We, we have several fact sheets on growing grapes in Utah. Okay. Yep. We, can, we can post links post those. to those. Yep. Jarrett says, man, wish I was around from the start. Can't wait for the replay. Jarrett, we will have this whole video posted from the beginning in our Facebook library. If you missed the beginning, go and check it out. Again, if you're enjoying it, we would love it and appreciate it if you would share the video, like it, invite your friends to join us. Um, so the only one other thing I wanted to say about trellising is that it needs to be strong. Okay. So and this is you pretty... can kind of get an idea. This is 12 and a half gauge wire. Um, it, it's a, it has a brake strength of, of about 800 pounds. So you think about when it's not just going to support the vines, but the fruit is heavy. Right, they get really heavy. We've got posts in the ground with in cement, and so they're and they're pulled pretty tight. Um, the other thing to consider too is that when these get loaded with wood and and leaves, and when the wind blows, that, that creates an additional wind load. And right. and so I've seen grapes just completely demolish vinyl fences and um, simple trellises with just one post on each end, those kind of things, they just destroy them. Once, once you hit that three or four year mark and they start to bear a lot of fruit, they, they just tear the trellises down. So you have to plan ahead. I mean, these may be small now, but they're, they'll get a lot bigger. Yeah, and yeah, just because we prune them back to almost nothing in the spring, by, by the time we hit you know September, October, a lot of this is loaded. Right. And um, you will have, you know, we'll have maybe several hundred pounds of plants um, as we go down the line. So, well, and you, will you talk about keeping the fruit off the ground and why that's important? Yeah, so what we do here uh, is that um, we, we train the, the vines as they grow and we actually will, will attach them to these um, cross arm wires up here. And what is, the, I see this little green tape. Yeah, What's so about that's that? the tape that we use. Where um, do you find this kind of stuff? So this is just basically um, just plant tie tape. You can buy this at a lot of nurseries and garden centers. Um, I actually buy it from a from a like a grape trellising supply company called Grafted. Uh, well, not Grafted Grapevine, but Orchard Valley Supply. And uh, so this is what we use and to tie those up with. And then as the vines hang over these, um, the fruit is actually born underneath those, and so it just hangs. It's probably off a the lot ground. easier to pick. Yeah, that it's way. super easy to pick, and the the leaves then shade the grapes. Um, so that they, we don't get sunburn problems as much and it kind of can hide them from the birds for a while. Right, so, right, because that can be a big problem. Do it's you want to talk problem. about pests at all? Yeah, so the biggest pest that we have here on grapes is um, we, we get a pest called leafhopper, grape leafhopper, um, which we have to deal with every year. Is that year. an insect? It's a small insect. It, it's kind of like a grasshopper, but really tiny. Okay. And uh, they can cause a lot of leaf damage and they can also carry viruses and infect um, grape vines with viruses. Okay. So they're important to control. Uh, and then as far as um, diseases, uh, we have a little bit of problems sometimes with powdery mildew, but because we're in a pretty dry location, it's, it's usually not, not a very bad. big problem. And if we keep the, the grape vines pruned, then there's enough airflow and there's usually not as much disease problems. Okay. So. Okay. Um, that's great advice. Any advice for birds? Do people use oh, netting birds. or what do they yeah, do? Yeah, so you're, if you want to eat them, you're probably going to have to put bird netting on. Do you do that here? We're going to start this year. Like I said, last year was the first year. Kind of a small crop. Yep, and so we didn't worry about it too much, but we are going to be putting bird netting on all of our, anything that we want to harvest, we're going to, we're going to net. Yep. Okay, Because the, the, the birds, The birds don't actually eat that much. They can only, they can only eat what they can sit on and, and peck at. Yeah. But what happens is they damage the skin of the fruit, even if they don't eat much of it. And then the wasps come in and finish it off. Mm. And so then it becomes really hard to pick because then you're disturbing the wasps and nobody wants to really do that. They're not the friendly so, ones. No, they're wasps. not. Yeah. Um, so, Mike, I know you've been working on an online course up on campus right. with some of your horticulture colleagues. 
we actually have a discount code for awesome. anyone tuned in today. So if you type discount in the comments, we will send you a code where you can, oh, maybe Kirk can tell us, I can't remember how much percent off. You'll get a discount on our fruit and nuts online course. And you'll get to hear from Mike Karen yep, and, and some of our- and there's a little section on grapes yeah. specifically in that You can class. learn more about grapes. We'll also share some fact sheets in the comments if you're interested in learning more about growing grapes in your own yard. Um, so again, if you want that discount code, just type in the comments, discount, and we will send you that coupon code. Um, do you have any last words of advice for just growing grapes? Just want to grapes? say, grapes are, grapes are actually quite easy to grow. And for anybody who's maybe looking to, to slip into the farmer's market scene, if, if you could grow some good table grapes, some nice fresh table grapes that, that look good like, like they do in the store with nice full clusters and stuff, you can probably make a killing. There you go little entrepreneurial idea yep. for you. So Lonnie wants the discount. Thanks, Lonnie. We're excited. We hope you enjoy that course. Um, again, if you missed the beginning of the video, go to our Facebook video library. You can watch the whole thing. We also have some other great videos on, on gardening and pruning and, and all your gardening needs. Um, if you want to come visit the, the vineyard here at Thanksgiving Point, you can check out that signage. It's all the way around. Yeah, you can barn. walk all the way around. We have uh, most of the plants also have a sign at the base that says oh, what they right. are. And so it's open to the public. We put it here so people can wander through it and have a look and just see the development as the season goes by. It's right across from farm country. So come on in. You can see Mike's handiwork here in the vineyard and, and enjoy the beautiful, beautiful vineyard here at Thanksgiving Point. So thanks yeah, for tuning in. We hope we'll see you next week. All right, see ya.